Hi guys, today we're working on this 32 gigabyte uh, SD card with no brand name on it. When it arrived, it didn't have any signs of life. This is what the circuit board looks like. And if you guys saw the video from a couple of episodes ago where uh, the work was done on the Mercedes-Benz key flash drive type, this is a similar situation here. Instead of a NAND chip that would traditionally sit in this TSOP48 frame, we have a SanDisk SD card that is mapped out here. So these pads connect to the technological pads on the uh, card that works like an NAND chip and the controller that is underneath this epoxy is what's driving the NAND. A uh, very helpful piece of information is written right here. Uh, the fact that it's based on SM2685 type of controller I'm going to work with this device today using a, a new tool. Spider board looks like this and basically it's a, it's a fairly complex design um, for an adapter. <laughs> you know, this is an adapter that could be manipulated and tweaked to work with pretty much any monolithic device. Some of you may ask, why don't you try to connect this interface directly to SD card reader? Well. Connecting it directly to SD card reader will have nothing to do with the data, even if the controller is functional. Um, the controller is programmed to work with the NAND. So if we were using a different controller, the NAND inside would operate differently. So connecting it through this interface isn't going to actually get us anywhere. I would prefer to add a little bit of solder on top of these um, pads just to give them extra softness. These needles, they're sharp, but uh, the flat surface of the pad may also be a little bit too slippery. So when the needles come off on the angle and pressure is applied to them, they have sometimes tendency to, you know, skip a beat and they just slide off. So adding a bit of solder on top of these uh, pads will make them hold themselves in place uh, a bit better. The biggest advantage of this tool is that you don't need to know how to solder to get it done. I know how to solder pretty well, but still this is really fun to use this adapter. So you kind of just navigate the needle into the pin and tie it down. Now when the contact is made, this needle pokes into the little tiny solder sphere that we've made on the pad and it leads to contact number one. We just gonna go ahead and keep on moving with the others to establish other connections. That's two. That's three.
so that's it I think we're all set the only thing I forgot to do is to add power and ground to our device okay let's check this thing for shorts No shorts, good. So here we have our control uh, panel. We need to assign our signals to the pins that we have. To do the assignment, you look at the schematic and you look at the corresponding number on the needle that you've attached to that specific signal and uh, in the software section you just need to kind of uh, navigate and label where uh, each pin goes. So now we're going to set it up to read into a dump file um, and we're just going to go with default optimal settings to read it. Reading at 5 megabytes per second so two hours later we should have uh, an extraction Finally, it's done. We can add, uh, add that information to the transformation graph. Let's have a look at our content. Page designer. Now, I did mention that uh, it looks fairly clean in the beginning. Now, how do I determine that? If we look at the end here, we can see that uh, the information in these vertical lines it, the consistency I should say the consistency of these vertical lines is fairly solid we don't have any um, random dots here all that much if we go into let's say zoom we see these dots every now and then but that's uh, that's a, that's not a lot ECC should be able to take care of that so let's go ahead and try to find ECC automatically so the ECC is found automatically uh, we have uh, ranges for 1100 and 31 at the end for service area gonna head hit uh, execution and it's off to the races so one thing that is worth mentioning based on what we see here right now uh, we see that every single page gets fixed for a 32 gigabyte device that has been refurbished not to have uh, defected areas that are hard to read it's very unusual so this does give me a little bit of a clue that maybe um, just maybe the contact wasn't great between the chip uh, and the PCB board all right as always the next step would be to see what our map looks like uh, 32.6 gigs is what we have in total after error correction what do we have that's invalid only 2.8 megabytes we can select it all Let's try to do a readout on this process. We read sectors. Let's go maybe with like 10 repeats and apply just basic stock uh, functions to it. All right, so we cleaned off about half of that. Okay, 1.4 megabytes is something that I can live with. Let's first of all visualize the data and see if there is any recognizable data structures in here so again we look at the block all we see is random noise inside and no distinct features of data no horizontal lines nothing that really stands out so there is XOR uh, go into da data inspection XOR analysis and let's try to pick the best appropriate one all right let's see what we have found i'm gonna run raw recovery in here we get pretty good images here as it is so there might be no mix at all just uh, xor and we need to arrange blocks by their sequence there you go the picture opens up perfectly 
Um, let's go ahead and assemble it using, um, I guess, block number. That analysis. What do we have in extensions for this? We actually do have a translator for this type. Not sure if it's gonna work. No, it's not. Delete it. Um, Well, we're going to use the block size, uh, block number in this case. Let's have a look at the results. We got the structure. No name is the name of the partition. We have our DCIM folder. and the files are here we actually have NEF files that open up and we have some more NEF files that also open up let's check the fat do we have any invalid entries there no it's all clean perfect and how much data is used so we got 25 gigs of content there and out of that 25 gigs we need to correct nothing this is it guys pretty much uh, you just witnessed how the case could be recovered using spiderboard on the rebranded device like this the results seem to be pretty good i'm just going to send off the report to the client this content will be ready for delivery if you guys have any questions as always drop them in the comments below i hope you enjoyed this episode this was pretty fun thank you for watching i'll see you guys in the next episode